Hello everyone. Welcome back to AR Study Desk. In this video, we will have a brief introduction to perspective projection and we'll explain the method to solve the problems. Now, this is the pictorial view of a road. As you can see, on both sides of the road, there are some decorative plants kept in ports. Now, you are going to draw the orthographic projection of this road. Okay? So, in the top view, you can see the road like this. Am I right? I have shown only a portion of the road. You can see the ports with the plant like this. Okay? Now, if you draw the front view, you are viewing from here. Am I right? When you are viewing from here, you can see the front view like this. The road will be seen as a single horizontal line like this. You can see a port and a plant on both the sides of the road. Since orthographic projection is a parallel projection, you won't be able to see the other ports and the plants directly behind this. Okay? Now, let us see what is perspective projection. Before starting perspective projection, just remember that perspective projection is same as perspective view. Whereas, isometric projection and isometric view were different. So, if you use perspective projection or perspective view, both means the same. As I said before, we will have only a brief introduction to perspective projection, which means that we will not be having a detailed explanation of perspective projection. Okay? So, Perspective projection means it is the actual view of the object. What is mean by actual view? Let us study that with the help of an example. This is the actual view from the center of the road that we have seen before. We know that the width of the road is constant throughout its length. But in the actual view, the portion of the road which is nearer to you seems to be wider than the ones which are away from you. And if you view the same road from the left end, you can see something like this. So you are getting an entirely different picture of the same road but from an another angle. Also, if I move to the extreme right side of this road, I can see the road like this. All the three images are of the same road but you are getting different perspectives. Let us see one more example with the same road. Now this is the view from the center of the road by a short person. This person is very short so his view will be like this. So from the same position if a tall person views this road, it will be like this. You can see the difference between two figures. Since this is a tall person, he will have a different perspective than that of a short person. In perspective projection, we will be drawing the actual view of the object from any point that is given. That means you can view the object from the left from the right, from the top, from the bottom, anywhere. So from all these positions, you will be getting different perspective views for the same object. Hope the idea of perspective projection is clear to you. Now we will have a comparison of isometric view and perspective view. This is the isometric view of a Rubik's Cube. As you know, there are three isometric axes for isometric view and all the sides of the cube are same. Now, this side of the cube is parallel to one of the isometric axes. Okay? And these two sides are parallel to this side. Which means that all these lengths will be same in the isometric view. Same as in the case of other lengths which are parallel to other isometric axes. 
So if you measure the sides of these cubes in this isometric view, all the sides will be having the same length. Now let us see the perspective view of this cube. It will be like this. Is there any difference between isometric view and perspective view? Yes. These squares which are nearer to you seems to be bigger than these squares which are away from you. Am I right? So just by looking at the figure, you can easily say that this is the perspective view of the Rubik's Cube. Now we will see the basic elements of perspective projection. We will have a horizontal plane like this which is called the ground plane and another plane which is perpendicular to the ground plane and that is called the picture plane. Now let us keep the object in the ground plane like this. So this is a square lamina or a square plate ABCD which is resting on the ground plane with a side AB parallel to picture plane and behind the picture plane. Why behind the picture plane? Because you are going to view from here. Now this is the person who is going to view this object. This red line represents the height of the person and the yellow colored circle represents the eye of the person who is viewing and that eye is called station point or SP. Let us assume that this person is standing exactly along the center of this square lamina. Now let us consider another plane which is called the central plane which passes through the station point and which is perpendicular to both the ground plane and the picture plane. You can see that the central plane passes through the center of the square lamina. Why? Because this person is standing along the center. Now what will be the actual view of the square lamina seen by this person from here? That will be the perspective view of this square lamina when this person views from here. So that is what we are going to find out. For that, we will be drawing some visual rays connecting the eye of the person and the corners of the square. So this is the visual ray connecting the station point and A. This is the visual ray connecting the station point and the corner B. And this one connects it to C and this connects to D. Now there will be some points where the visual rays touches the picture plane over here. Am I right? Now if I join those points where the visual rays touches the picture plane, we will get the perspective view of this square lamina when viewed from this position. I haven't shown that over here. I will be showing that when we do a problem on perspective projection. But just to know the shape, I will draw the perspective view of the square over here. So if the station point is in front of the picture plane and above the ground plane and the central plane passes through the center of the square, you will get the perspective view like this. So where do you get this perspective view? We will be getting that on the picture plane by connecting the points where the visual rays touches the picture plane. Now I will introduce one more plane to you and that is the horizon plane. Horizon plane is parallel to the ground plane and it passes through the station point. Okay. Now let us assume that the person move to the left like this. So the central plane will be on the left side of this square lamina. Similarly as before, we will draw the visual rays to all the corners so that you will get the perspective view of this square lamina on the picture plane when it is viewed from here. So I'll show that shape over here. So this is how the shape of the square will be when you view from the left side of the square. As we said before, 
will be getting this shape on the picture plane again if the person moves to the right side what happens the central plane will be on the right side of the square lamina and you will draw the visual trace to all the corners so that you will get the perspective view on the picture plane where the visual trace touches the picture plane how do you get the perspective view by joining the points where the visual trace touches the picture plane okay so when viewed from the right side and from this position the perspective view will be like this hope the basic elements in perspective projection is clear to you now we shall move to a question on perspective projection a square lamina 30 mm side rests on the ground with one of its sides touching the picture plane the station point is 30 mm above the ground plane 20 mm in front of the picture plane and lies in a central plane 20 mm to the right of the center of the square draw the perspective view of the square by visual ray method in this video we'll be explaining only the visual ray method so this is the ground plane and this is the picture plane now we have a square lamina of side 30 mm resting on the ground with one of its sides touching the picture plane so the square lamina will be like this with a side touching the picture plane so i'll name it a b c and d the station point is 30 mm above the ground plane so it will be above the ground plane and 20 mm in front of the picture plane it will be in front of the picture plane and lies in a central plane 20 mm to the right of the center of the square which means that the station point will be here which is 20 mm in front of the picture plane 30 mm above the ground plane and it is 20 mm to the right of the center of the square so we can draw the central plane like this is it clear now if i draw the visual trace i'll get it like this as we discussed before where do we get the perspective view you'll be getting the perspective view on the picture plane how to get the perspective view on the picture plane first find out the points where the visual rays touches the picture plane so this visual ray connecting sp and a will touch the picture plane at this point that is at a itself why because capital a is on the picture plane so i'll mark that point as a1 similarly the point where the visual ray to b touches the picture plane is this that is b1 also the visual ray to c will meet the picture plane over here and i'll mark that as c1 then the visual ray to d will meet the picture plane over here and i'll mark it as d1 so if you connect all these points like this you will get the perspective view of this square lamina when viewed from here now i shall name this perspective view as a b c and d so this capital a b c d is now your perspective view hope the visual ray method of finding the perspective view is very clear to you now let us see how to draw this on a sheet so when you view from the top you can see this picture plane as a line i'll name it as p p okay so it seems as a horizontal line like this now you can see this square lamina a b c d of side 30 mm in the top view as a square with the side ab touching the picture plane now when you view from the front you can see this ground plane as a line which i'll name it as gp so i will draw that ground plane as a line gp in our drawing and you know that in the front view this square lamina seems to be a line 
So if you project this square to the front view, you will get it as a line that is a dash brackets d dash and b dash brackets c dash. So this is a square lamina which seems to be a line in the front view. Now where is the central plane? It is 20 mm to the right of the center of the square. So it is 20 mm to the right of the center of the square. So before proceeding, I'll name this central plane as CP, okay, which seems to be a vertical line in the top view. And this central plane is 20 mm to the right of the center of the square. And it will be like this. This is CP. Now you will mark the station point, which is on the central plane and 20 mm in front of the picture plane. So that is 20 mm in front of the picture plane means it will be over here like this. Since this is the top view of the station point, you will mark it as small sp. So the point will be here. Similarly, in the front view, you can see the station point which is 30 mm above the ground plane and on the center plane. Correct? So you can mark that station point 30 mm above the ground plane. This is the ground plane. So you can mark 30 mm above the ground plane. So you'll mark that point as SP dash. Why? Because it is the front view. Now you are going to draw these visual trace in both these views. Okay. So from this SP, you'll connect to ABCD and from SP dash, you'll connect to A dash, B dash, C dash and D dash like this. Is that fine? Here A dash and D dash is a single point. So there are two visual rays here, which is going to A dash and D dash. Same applies for B dash brackets C dash. Now mark the points where the visual rays touches the picture plane. The visual ray to A will meet the picture plane over here and I'll mark it as A1. Similarly, the visual ray to D will meet the picture plane over here and I'll mark it as D1. And this point will be B1 and this visual ray which goes to C meets the picture plane here at C1. Now draw projectors from A1, B1, C1 and D1 to the corresponding visual rays in the front view. When you draw the projector from A1, it should meet the visual ray connecting SP dash and A dash. So this is the visual ray connecting SP dash and A dash. And if I draw a projector from A1, it will meet here and I will name that point as capital A. Similarly, if I draw a projector from D1, it should meet the visual ray connecting SP dash and D dash. This is the visual ray connecting SP dash and D dash. So I'll get the point D over here. Similarly, I'll get B over here. And if I draw a projector from C1, it should meet the visual ray connecting SP dash and C dash. And it will be over here. And that is C. Now, if I join capital ABCD, I'll get the required perspective view. Hope the visual ray method of drawing perspective view or perspective projection is very clear to you. You may download our app from Google Play Store and subscribe to practice a number of questions on perspective projection, which are step by step animated. Thank you for watching. Happy learning.